going to do a demonstration uh, which was popularized by Doug Delamater, a high school chemistry teacher now retired from uh, Ontario, Canada. And he uses simply rubber balls in a dish to demonstrate properties of solids, liquids, gases, phase changes between them, and the kinetic molecular theory. You know, chemistry has very few theories. We have the atomic theory and we have the kinetic theory, or the kinetic molecular theory. And I say, let's put the kinetic back in the kinetic molecular theory. So a tub full of rubber balls, in this case, is a perfect demonstration device for illustrating the properties of solids, liquids, and gases, and energy. The simplest thing to know about the kinetic molecular theory is that it's molecules in motion. There's always a slight amount, there's always kinetic energy unless you get to absolute zero. Now in a solid, that energy, basically the energy of motion, is basically limited to vibrations or rotations of the molecules. Think of every rubber ball here as a molecule, okay? And as they have a small amount of energy, in this case the energy of shaking these, what you see is that those balls are kind of rotating, they're vibrating with respect to each other, but notice what they're not doing, okay? They're pretty much locked in position. That's the crystal lattice, the solid state structure. The molecules or the atoms, depending on what kind of substance you have, those particles are not moving relative to each other with the normal kinetic energy that they have in the solid state. Now, as you increase for the same solid, if you increase the amount of kinetic energy, clearly they begin to move around. And now you can see that sometimes the positions of the ball change. If you watch that ball on the top, it's obviously moving around. And I can get them, all of them, to move around. I can see some of them. But notice, even though they're moving more, sometimes now you have enough vibrations, you can see those balls changing position. So what have we done? That's the transition. Oops, we'll get back to that in a minute. The molecules are still pretty much contained in the same volume, but now they can move around relative to each other, okay? Now what happens, that's the liquid state, about the same volume, but now the molecules can move relative to one another. They can change their position in the liquid state. Now what happens? If you add even more energy to a liquid, what happens to those molecules? Now, some of them are going to have enough energy to escape the liquid phase. And what are they going to enter? They're going to enter the vapor phase. So as I increase the amount of energy, what happens? Some of those molecules that are in the liquid phase have enough energy to escape and to enter the vapor phase. And so eventually, of course, we had fun. <laughs> Did we have fun? All of those molecules escaped the liquid phase. They're now dispersed in the vapor phase. One of the um, central pictures you can give your students about molecules in the vapor phase is that they are very, very far apart. The gas phase is almost empty space, just a few molecules very, very far apart in the gas phase. So that's the kinetic molecular theory. The main take-home lesson I like from that, molecules in motion. You can use the kinetic molecular theory to explain not just the properties of solids, liquids, and gases. They're macroscopic properties. You can also use it to explain the properties of gases. When you talk about Boyle's law, when you talk about Charles's law, the effect of, of volume, pre pressure, temperature, uh, the interrelated gas variables. When you look at all of those things, you're really talking about molecules in motion, molecules colliding either with one another, if you talk about rates of reactions, colliding with the walls of the container, if you're talking about the pressure of a gas. So the kinetic molecular theory is really a central theory in chemistry. As I said, one of our very few theories, but it explains a great deal. All of the properties of a solid and a liquid. 
we had those molecules in the solid phase contained in this volume, it pretty much didn't change volume. And you couldn't have gotten it any closer together, because those rubber balls were about as close together as they were going to get. That's the characteristic of the solid state, OK? Solids are incompressible because those molecules are as close together as they're going to get. They can't physically get any closer. The liquid and the solid had just about the same volume, right? because there's a small increase in the volume, but in the liquid state, even though those molecules, the balls, would have been moving around a little bit, they were still contained in the same overall thing. But they take the shape of the container, they pour with the container, because they can move around, and they move around randomly uh, in that. And really, you would have seen all of the molecules moving around in the liquid phase. All of the molecules are in random motion and the solid. And then, of course, as they go to the vapor phase, notice so we're talking about the properties, the macroscopic properties, and what are we doing? What does the theory always do? The theory provides a bridge from the macroscopic properties that we can observe, that a solid is incom incompressible, that a liquid flows and takes the shape of its container, and we relate those to the microscopic, to the molecular level of the behavior of the particles. One very important thing as we conclude this, I, I call this bouncing ball distillation um, because of the bouncing balls. You could d distill them, you could condense, and so on. Uh, very important, I think, from a, a teaching perspective, whenever you do an analogy with your students, remember to bring it full circle. Because what they'll remember is bouncing balls. And they're not going to necessarily remember because they're, they're abstract concrete reasoning is such that they're going to think that the kinetic molecular theory has to do with bouncing rubber balls. And it really has to do with molecules. So you really want to tie it together by reviewing, OK, what did every rubber ball represent? Every rubber ball represented a molecule. And again, whenever you're doing an analogy like that, bring it full circle, tie it together. So because a lot of your students are at the point where they're very concrete thinkers, and that's what they remember. So bouncing ball distillation, kinetic molecular theory, time to put the, put the kinetic back in kinetic molecular theory. Thanks.